Hey guys, Pesty here, founder of the Elite Gaming Channel, and it looks like these patch notes for the latest balance patch have come out literally seconds ago. You see there, March the 1st balance patch, or patch 11963. And as we're heading towards N4C in literally just a couple of days, or well, four days I should say, I thought I would quickly review these and give you my thoughts. Now, I've not actually had a chance to look at these yet, so I'm gonna give you my gut reactions from an eSports point of view straight away. So I will point out, this is really from an eSports point of view, so it doesn't really reflect maybe how casual players might feel about it or the impact it will have on the more casual scene. Obviously, because we're an eSports channel, I'm really thinking about it in terms of pro balance, but I've not seen this yet, so you're gonna get my reaction as I do it. And we're gonna go through this quite quick fire. All right, patch 11963 is releasing later this week. They are continuing to hone in on tighter win rates across the range of possible civilization matchups, making the changes to complement some of the updates introduced earlier. Good. With every new patch, we make sure to observe the reaction and responses and how our community responds to them in our social channels. Definitely good to hear. What we've noticed after our last patch is that changes made to Siege may have overly impacted the Chinese. Agree with that. And as a result, we're making some changes to provide the Chinese new strategic options. Additionally, we're looking down to slow down the early game of the Mongols and Delhi Sultanate by tuning starting resources, research bonuses, and more. All right. That's good. All right. Now, always that note there, that applies always, right? So you won't be able to see replays from before. Join us on Twitch 3 p.m. Pacific on Tuesday, March the 1st. So you might still be able to catch that if, when's this video gonna go? Yeah, you'll be able to catch this if you've watched this video early. If not, go back and look at the VOD on the official Age of Empires Twitch. All right, general, wonder cost increased from 3,000 per resource to 6,000. Additional increases made to Mongol wonder cost seen below. Developer note, Wonders are meant to be a rare yet exciting stalemate breaker. We found the current costs are too low in larger multiplayer games where allies can all tribute a single player. An increased cost solves this issue but puts Wonder victories further out of reach for 1v1 and 2v2 matches. In a future update, we plan to implement a scaling cost so it's a valid option regardless of player count. That's funny. My initial gut instinct was going to be... Why is there not a scaling cost? Like, why are you making this only suitable for, um, only fixing a, a multiplayer issue? I mean, my gut reaction to that is, for multiplayer, it was definitely necessary. If you watched uh, Lidical's Pro League, it was like a really big problem how many Wonder victories were happening. And like, the game was really about building a Wonder as quick as you can and defending it. However, this has made Wonders just not exist in 1v1. I mean, they barely existed in 1v1. Now they don't exist. So... I, I don't know if I'm a huge fan of this change, if I'm being really honest on gut instinct. I wish it could have been sliding scale from day one because, yeah, wonder costs are meant to break a stalemate, but now they're just, there is no way to break a stalemate. That's really hard. I mean, I, I, I'm not like being overly critical of it. It's fine, but um, definitely kind of doesn't do much for a 1v1. Stonewall build time increased from 8 seconds to 16 seconds. Great change. Additional adjustments made to Delhi Sultanate. Specific Stonewall build time seen below. This is great. Okay. St a big nerf to Stonewalls. Really, really like that. Developer note, Stonewalls are very powerful as they completely stop infantry and cavalry armors. We want the effort level of building walls to match their power level and allow more response time to their construction. Longer build times also make it more difficult for the enemy to immediately rewall a section that's been destroyed. This is our first step in the direction of allowing more counterplay options to stone walls. This is a fantastic change. Um, I thought that maybe it would be um, they would look at increasing the cost or something, but this is also good. I really like that. Good. I, I, I'm a fan. Made improvements to a bug where elephant attack animation cooldowns could be bypassed, resulting in much higher damage than intended. Good. That was just fixing a bug. Of course, animation cancelling was uh, cancelled in the previous patch, but there was still an issue with elephants. Good to know that's fixed. And fixed a crash that could occur when observing the game at 8x speed. I never witnessed that myself, but, you know, good. Removed Boulder Bay, Confluence and Black Forest from 1v1 quick match map pool. Please note these maps can still be selected for a custom game. That is going to be very popular, I think, with a lot of people, especially Boulder Bay. Actually, especially kind of all of them. Um, 
So, wow, we're really... That, I mean, on the one hand, that does mean that the map pool for QS has become, you know, quite narrow. But, I mean, I think that's a good thing. These maps had to come out. That's good. There's changes based on feedback we've heard from you, as well as data we've referenced that shows the maps appear to be most enjoyed in... We've referenced that show the maps... Okay, the maps that appear to be most enjoyed in the quick match context. We're going to reintroduce some of these once ranked is introduced in the spring update. Also, changes coming for confluence, so there's significant changes for one. Okay, that all sounds good to me. I mean, if they fix these maps, then I've got no problem with them coming back. But this is definitely needed to be done for now. So much map dodging was prevalent. You, you. I mean, I watched some of my, I won't name, but some of my favorite streamers that I like watching, and they'd spend 10, 12 minutes just dodge or being dodged. It was really problematic. Now we're on to the real meat, civilization-specific changes. Chinese fixed a bug where the nest of these would stop firing once its initial target died. In many cases, the nest of these would fire less shots and intended making it inferior to the mangonel. Okay, good. Imperial official and tax changes. Okay, they've not actually. So these are just the initial notes. They've not actually said what these what these changes. We want to encourage more active use of the imperial taxes. They were previously too difficult to collect, and we've observed that some players would avoid collecting their surplus taxes. We want players to be able to deplete their taxes so that Imperial officials can get right back to supervising. Okay, they've not really explained exactly how that's going to look, but... Oh, they have. Okay, ignore me. I really should just try and read a little bit ahead before just, you know, powering through. All right, general. Tax cooldown on buildings increased from 15 seconds to 20 Fixed a bug that allowed Capital Town Center to receive taxes after being destroyed. Supervised bonus increased from 150% back to the original 200% thanks to everyone that called out this change after our last patch. Note the supervised reduction was not intended for our previous update and has been reverted. We have plans for this change to return in the future but only alongside other buffs we plan to introduce to the Chinese. Okay, and here's the, okay, there's the buff. Tax carry capacity increased from 20 to 40 gold. Okay. Imperial Academy, Imperial Examination Technology Bonus to tax carry capacity increased from 40 to 80. Okay, that obviously makes sense. If you're going to increase the tax carry capacity from 20 to 40, that's got to go up as well. And now a tax drop-off location for the Imperial official. Okay, so an interesting buff to the Chinese there, a buff to the Imperial official. Um, pretty significant, probably. Delhi Sultanate. Delhi Sultanate infantry stone wall gate build time increased from 30 to 60 second. And starting wood reduced from 250 to 200. Note, we intentionally gave the Delhi Sultanate extra wood, but we found this took too much away from decision making and trade offs between opening strategies. This change encourages the Delhi Sultanate to consider their wood and technology typings more carefully in the opening parts of the game. Um, I mean, put together, that's a, a relatively significant nerf, you know, combined. Sanctity bonus gold reduced from 100 to 50%. Sanctity gold generation bonus is allowed for the Delhi Sultanate to snowball towards Castle Age or a sacred victory with too little investment on gold veins. That is, yeah, Delhi's taken, you know, a pretty significant hit there. Going to be interested to see how this rates on some pro tier lists coming up. Keep an eye on your favorite tier list creators, whether it's um, Beastie or Grubby or Aussie Drongo. I mean, they're gonna, I'm going to be interested to see what guys make of these tiers because... That's a that's a few but that's a few nerfs. Mongols. Mongol wonder cost increased from four thousand to eight thousand. Okay, so the others are going to six thousand, and Mongols to eight thousand. So a wonder victory definitely not going to happen for the Mongols. The Uvu stone generation is no longer a flat hundred and five per minute. It now automatically scales. 80, 100, 120, 150. Interesting. So that's a nerf in the early game and a buff in the late game. But, I mean, really it's just a nerf in age one. I mean, it's very, very minimal, the difference in feudal, right? 
The developer note Mongo High Stone Production early game provided a snowballing map control advantage. It also provided a huge percentage boost to the economy at the start of the game. We wanted to spread out the effectiveness of this building so it's not quite as impactful early and it's better later when Mongols struggle with a lack of walls. I mean, I do like the note here and I like the thought that's gone into that because the Mongols are way overpowered early and they that obviously starts becoming less impactful later in the game. But that's that's now very strong at the end of the game. 150 per minute. 120 per... Interesting. Damage of Castle Age Khan reduced from 12 to 8. That's a good change. The Mongol Khan is intended to be a strong group support unit. His health and armor scale up significantly in the Castle Age, so it doesn't get focus fired too early in large battles. However, we're seeing the unit perform too well individually due to its high range and damage. To help move the Mongol Khan unit back to the group support role as intended, we've reduced his damage per attack. Okay, that's good. Yam and Yam Network Movement Speed Bonus Time reduced from 20 to 10. Yam Movement Benefits offer too great of a lingering bonus which allowed for Mongol players to set up raids and retreat too easily for little wood commitment. Enemies of Mongols should find it less punishing for retreating if caught near a Yam boosted area. That's it. Hmm. None of these nerfs feel that huge on their own, but that's quite a lot put together. The ones to cost you can ignore. In 1v1, that's just... I don't think I've ever seen a 1v1 Mongol wonder victory at a, you know, any kind of uh, high level. This is quite significant in the early game, but they make up for it in the late game. I mean, it's still... That is still a nerf, because really the Mongol power is in the early game, right? So it's still over... I think it's still overall a nerf, but not that... Mm. Damage of the Khan, that's quite significant. And the Yam network movements, we just fairly... I'm gonna... I still think the Mongols would be very fine. My own opinion is this still might not go far enough on the Mongols. Others might disagree. If you disagree, let me know in the chat. I'm... I don't know if they've gone far enough still. If I, I don't think they've gone far enough still, I'll say it. That's my view. But... It's good to see nerfs, and they are, like, at least they're nerfing. I personally support, like, gradual, incremental nerfs. I don't like this yo-yo that we saw in some other games in the franchise, especially Age of Empires 3, where civs became extremely overpowered and unplayable than overpowered. So, I don't know. What's next? We'll have more to share with you regarding our spring update lineup and its upcoming public update preview very soon. In the meantime, our balance team wanted to share some major changes they have brewing for the Abbasid dynasty, Chinese and Holy Roman Empire. Oh, I'm excited for this. All right. This is, this is really exciting. So this is, this, is, this is some changes that are coming in the spring update. Nice. Abbasid dynasty, the unique units of civilization, should stand out and be especially exciting to build. While camels can be useful in some situations, they feel too limited in where they shine. To help camels pop, we are making them less specialized at fighting a single class of units and more useful across the board. The goal is not to make exclusively camel armies, but for it to be more effective to mix a few into your composition. Every, also, every wing at the House of Wisdom should be a strategically viable choice in every age. We like the initial impact created by the economic wing in Feudal Age, but the other choices aren't there yet. We've adjusted the power level of text, moved them to different tiers, and reduced costs. I am so excited for that. This sounds sick, right? That sounds really, really good. That's exactly what you want to hear. Um, I'm excited for that. Awesome. Chinese. The Chinese dynasty system offers a unique and fun way to advance the civilization. There are some frustrating parts we'd like to adjust while well, increasing the overall relevancy of its various unlocks. The special units and buildings unlocked by the dynasty will always be buildable once they're unlocked. In addition, we're moving all of the dynasty buildings up one age, so they become available at the phase in the game when they are most needed. Yeah, I love that this will always be buildable once they are unlocked in addition. Okay. Okay, so that's going to be... Okay, I quite like that. Okay, I especially like that the that is always going to be once you unlock, you use it the whole time. Okay, I like that too. Giving that that's that I like that. Holy Roman Empire. We'd like civilizations to have multiple strategic paths to choose from throughout the course of the match. 
Currently, there's too much power in the late game landmarks of the HRE. Agree. Leading to repetitive gameplay. Agree. We are creating more interesting decision making among the landmark choices for the HRE and giving them stronger options for distinctive play in the early game. All right, these all sound great, right? These spring update preview sounds great. Disclaimer, whatever. All right, back to the top, guys. What do we think about patch 11963? Well, it's obviously been fairly limited. But this is not the spring update. It's a small balance patch, and it is a relatively small one. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's dramatic. I don't know if a dramatic balance patch is needed right now. I think that the state of balance in the games actually, apart from Mongols, is it's certainly much better than it had been. Um, and I think the devs have done a really, really good job with balance in general um, in terms of it consistently improving since game release. So I think this is a good for what it is, which is a relatively narrow, limited patch. I'm very excited for this spring patch. I think most of the improvements this game needs are not so much as in balance, but in other areas of the game, especially around observe, ob observing and things like that. But nonetheless, I would give this patch um, a solid A. Let me know in the chat what you guys think about this patch. Are you impressed, unimpressed, happy, sad? How do you think it's going to affect N4C? Is it enough on the Mongols? Let me know your opinion, guys. And apart from that, have a great evening and excited to, uh, to see what we've got in store in Berlin for N4C. Bye for now.